It's of the Muslims. And then only you will be really able to catch the culprits. And if you get the culprits, whoever they are, surely they have to be punished. We know the authorities, they tell us that why majority Muslims have been picked up. And the argument given was that when we analyze that in Punjab terrorism, majority people arrested, they were sick. In Ulfa, in Assam, majority were Hindus. In Tamil Nadu LTT, they were yeah. Hindus. So, but natural in Bombay, because you know we think it's linked with Pakistan Kashmir, it would be Muslims. I agree with you for sake of argument. If a terrorist attack is done in Punjab, the majority people living in Punjab are sick. So if majority Sikhs are arrested, it is logical. In Assam, majority are Hindus, so if Hindus are arrested, it is logical. In Tamil Nadu, majority people living are Hindus, so Hindus are arrested, logical. In Bombay, are the majority people living Muslims? The Muslims are minority. So why are they being picked up in majority? <laughs> if you think it's an act of Kashmir militant, if you have got accords, we have got no doubt with that. But do you mean to say the LTT can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say Ulfa can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say six terrorists can't come to Bombay? You cannot say 100% this act has been Muslim. You can say high possibilities. And if you show proof, we are with you. What we are trying to tell you that identify the people who are responsible, catch them and punish them. But not thousands of people, innocent Muslims being rounded up. We know there are several records. Just a couple of months back, according to the ATS of Maharashtra, 16 members were arrested from a hardcore Hindu organization. They were involved in three bomb blasts in mosques. Mahmudi Mosque in Parbani, one of the mosques in Jalna, one in Pura, three. And recently on 6th of April, in one place, by mistake, a bomb detonates, by mistake. While they were making a bomb, it exploded. It killed four people and 11 were injured. When inquiries were made, many people belonged to the same hardcore Hindu organization. And they found there that the plan was that to attack the mosque in the guise of Sikh. You know, this took place in Nandit. Sikh, why? Because there was a rift going on between the Muslims and Sikh. A Sikh girl married a Muslim boy, so there was tension, so they wanted to take advantage. So they wanted to do an act in the guise of Sikh. There are cases we know that Hindus have attacked wearing caps and beards. So you can't say 100% Muslims are involved. Maybe high possibilities, I'm not saying no. Recently, a few days back, on Friday, 8th of September, four bomb blasts took place in Malika. One outside one of the mosques, one outside a graveyard, in which 35 innocent Muslims were killed and more than 100 innocent Muslims were injured. Again, prime suspect, LET. Can be, but not prime. Imagine, it is a game plan. It's a no name game. If you go to America, it's Al Qaeda. Here it is LET. According to an article that came in the DNA on the 6th of September, a person by the name of Joseph, he writes that the foreign experts they tell that if you involve yourself too much in the blame game, you lose focus and the main culprits are never caught. You do a proper investigation. If really they're caught, they have to be punished. Irrespective of whether the terrorists are Muslim or non-Muslims, whether they belong to Kashmir, whether to Pakistan, whether Ulfa, whether LTT, if they are proved to be involved in that, they should be punished. I'm not here to support any terrorist act, not at all. But if you want to get to the bottom of it, you should know that this should be done meticulously. We should take the citizens in confidence. One of the other cause is the media. Mainly that media which is controlled by the politicians. We have to be careful of this. And this media, they can convert black to white, day to night, hero into a villain, villain into hero. And we see that very often. If you see my tapes, I've given very such examples. But in India, it's fortunate that the more popular media is not controlled by the politicians. And we find that this media really gave the true picture, whether it be the Gujarat riots, the Bombay riots in 93, or even today, the innocent Muslims are being harassed. 
the media, whether it be the newspaper, the news channels, they have really given a true picture of what's happening. Not 100%, sometimes they get involved in news which is sensational, so when they get the news without checking up, they give it. If it's sensational, they give it. But as a whole, we have to agree, the media has been honest. I'm talking about non-Muslim media. I'm not talking about the Muslim media. And here we find that they were honest and they projected the real picture. But what we have to be careful is of the media which is controlled by the politicians. And as far as the judiciary system is concerned in India, the innocent citizen of India, especially the Muslim victims, we have faith in the Indian judiciary system. Though some people say that some are corrupt, they are blasphemed in the community, but as a whole, we know most of the judges, they are upright and they are honest. We only hope that these people are not influenced by the politicians. So far, I know most of the judges, they don't care much for the politicians. If once the politicians get hold of the judiciary system, then God save this country. Yet, we have faith in the judiciary system. And to conclude, we have to realize that since we know that the cause of terrorism is injustice, the cause of terrorism is wrongdoing to a particular group of people, this thing should be stopped. How can we stop? As I mentioned, number one, the politicians, they should be honest, they should be just. They should not go for the vote bank and do things which are wrong. Once they're honest and they're just, irrespective, they lose their seat. You see to it that terrorism will stop. Point number two, the innocent Indian citizens, they should not be instigated by the politicians and do wrong things and kill other innocent human beings. Point number three, the police, they should be upright. They should be just. If someone is being harmed, they should see to it that he's protected. They should not be ploy of the politicians. I know there are times that they can be transferred, but if every policeman in India is honest, the new policeman who stands for will also be honest. So what will the politician do? If 100% of the policemen, I'm not blaming all of them, Please don't get me wrong. I know most of them honest, they want to do, but because they're under the pressure of the politicians, they're afraid that they'll be transferred, they'll be harassed. But if all the policemen get together and say, let's all of us be honest, if they transfer you, the new person coming will also be honest. So there itself, most of this trouble of injustice will stop. And last but not the least, people cannot take the law in their hand. They cannot kill other innocent human beings, even if they belong to the same community who has an injustice on you. If we take this and we see to it that injustice is stopped, then surely India will be a very good country. It is estimated that in the next, by 2020, India would be a superpower. If all the Hindus and Muslims, if we live together, if we love each other harmoniously, we may have our differences. The differences will be there. We live with our differences, but we love each other and we live peacefully and harmoniously, again, India will be a superpower. And Mahatma Gandhi, he said that if India has to improve, it should be ruled by a dictator as honest and as upright as Hazrat Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi, the father of a nation, he advised the best thing India can do is have a dictator like Hazrat Umar. May Allah be pleased with him, anhu. He was an honest person. When it came for justice, he did not see whether the Muslim or non-Muslim. For justice, he gave justice. Therefore, he got the title Al Farooq, the person who differentiated truth from falsehood. I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, Wakul jal haq al batil, inna la batil zahuka. When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. I would like to end my talk by giving the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson, who said that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born.